Blessings, everyone. Welcome once again to the morning talk with Charlie Verberman Bergeron here on Humanity Healing. In my weekly show that brings forth what's going on within my own energy field, my own path and journey through life, and which I'm being guided to be honest about so that others can find honesty within themselves. And this is a challenge for all of us. Yesterday and Global Heart Team, as you can see the t-shirt that I'm wearing, um, the topic was was really about honesty. And the title of the talk was Honesty in Our Personal Heart. And it touched me in a way that not only brought words through me from my higher self, but also made me look at the world in a different way way that bothered me greatly. Not only are we in a world that's dramatically changing uh, financially, radically, truthfully, it's hard to believe for me sometimes that we have come to this point, that this is actually taking place. <laughs> and I know that sounds strange because it's everywhere. It's a war of its own. It's not a war in the sense of what we are used to wars, although we're seeing that in other parts of the world, not here in the United States yet. Here in the United States, the war is individuals and, and it's like pop up, it's popcorn, it pops here, pops there, and, and many people are dying and being killed for no reason. No reason other than somebody's rage. And it doesn't matter how they die. The fact that it's happening is the issue. The fact that somewhere in our inability to trust each other and to love each other, we have reached a point where this can take place and people look blindly at it. The people who are in charge of our country look blindly at what's happening to innocent people in their population. Good morning, Renee. Good morning, Victoria. Good morning, Anita. Uh, thank you for showing up. This morning, I have no show notes other than a poem or a message I wrote yesterday. And I almost wasn't going to talk today, uh, partly because I realized that I now have uh, a sleep, sleep apnea, serious sleep apnea. <laughs> I've been wondering why I've been sleeping so much and so tired. And I guess I've had it for a while and never, you know, with COVID, with not being able to smell and taste, with brain fog, <laughs> with neuropathy, with all of this other stuff, it, you know, sleep was just not an issue. <laughs> uh, and I laugh, I laugh. Because part of my journey has been rage, 
I've been raging against uh, a virus. I've been raging against uh, a system that fails to really, you know, take care of its beings. I've been up and down and emotional, and I'm sure each and every one of you have as well. So when I woke up this morning, I didn't know if I was going to talk. And then in the last few minutes, I said, Charlie, you have to. This is who you are. Whether people appreciate your messages or not is irrelevant. The message needs to be put out into the world. And that's been my journey for 30 years, is putting messages into the world. It's funny because uh, in 1996, I was guided to create bumper stickers. And the first bumper sticker that I was told to create was to reverse Descartes' statement of, I think, therefore I am, and put it back into its true form, which is, I am, therefore I think. 1996, I don't think the world was ready for my bumper stickers. Now, they probably make a lot more sense. But that's how life has changed so dramatically in just that few years. I want everybody to just take a deep breath. Inhale slowly. Fill your body with the air that you are sitting in and say thank you. I want you to say thank you to yourself for breathing. It may sound totally insane. I want you to thank yourself for breathing. If we did not breathe, we would have no heartbeat. We would have no mental acuity. We would not be able to have this conversation. Think about that. When was the last time that you truly appreciated the fact that you could breathe. COVID taught us a lesson. Many people died because they couldn't breathe. It wasn't the brain fog. It wasn't this, it wasn't that. They stopped breathing. And when we stop breathing, eventually our heart stops. And no heart, no life. And in this time that we're in right now, we have both rage and love vying for the power over all of us. And that's what today's talk about. Today's talk about is the rage and love within us, not what's happening outside of us. What's happening inside of us and around us begins here, begins here, right, right here in this body. And I know that each of you are are hurting, you're upset, you're frustrated, you can't believe some of the things that are coming out of the mouths of our leaders, the dismantling of human rights in this country, the proposal that 
the advance we have made in our civilization is now being destroyed just like the buildings in the Ukraine. in a different manner, but it's the structure. So whether we're destroying structures, physical structures with bombs or emotional structures with words and rules and regulations, both of them are taking away our ability to live free to be sovereign beings. And I say this, and I don't mean to make it sound morbid because you all understand this, but I want to get this point across. So I looked up rage, the, the word rage, and I encourage people, when you have these words that come up, go look them up. I, I always use Merriam Webster and it has a very good collective of both antonyms and synonyms, and you can look at look at the word from many different angles. So the synonyms and related to rage are agitation, delirium, distraction, frenzy, fury, hysteria, uproar, related to Rage are chaos, confusion, disorder, havoc, pandemonium, turmoil. I'll leave it there. There's a whole list. There's a whole list of words that the word rage ties into. And when you read them and you look out the window and or you look at the TV and say what's happening around me we are now living in a world of rage whether you're emotionally feeling it at a high level or a low level is really irrelevant the fact that you're feeling it is your number one problem and we need to look at it as our number one problem not just here in the United States, but around the world. And we have to look at who and what is causing that rage and why it's happening. And we have to dive deeper into ourselves. Two of my bumper stickers that I created in 1996, they're in different colors, the two that are black, which represent negativity, are negative thought is mental paralysis and self-abuse is self-inflected. And there's a reason these bumper stickers have risen up. I put them as my page, my picture of my page on my Facebook page. And I might even start to produce them again. I have some of the old ones. But this, these were written before I was given the name Riverman. I had died and come back, but at that point I was called California Charlie. And I'll share the little story that I was a a biker, motorcycle biker, uh, although not wearing colors of any gang, I rode with many gang and knew many motorcycle gang people because I grew up on the streets and became, was a gang member when I was 10 years old. So gang life was no surprise to me. And when I died in my motorcycle accident, and I was selling these, putting these bumper stickers in, in stores. That's how I got my name, Riverman. And the woman who told, saw me with these bumper stickers said, I've been waiting for you to appear. 
And I didn't understand any of that then, and I didn't understand the meanings of these bumper stickers that I created. But I knew that I was guided by what I thought were angels to put these messages into the world. And that woman gave me a car because I didn't, I had a old beat up car. It was a big Mercury, a big Mercury Monterey that was bright yellow. Now, many of you are old enough to know what like a 1960 Mercury Monterey looks like. It looks like the Titanic <laughs> and bright yellow. You don't miss this. And I had every one of those bumper stickers on the back of it. I was a sight to behold. And I laugh now. But I was doing what I was guided to do. Where did that guidance come from is what I want to ask in you. Where does your guidance come from? Does it come through your brain? Or does it come through your heart? For me, I thought it came, always came through my brain. I've been enamored with my brain my whole life, as many of us have. But when we look around the world now, we look at all of these people with great educations, amazing, brilliant brains, failing the world, failing the future generations. So I want to read what I wrote yesterday, which is a little more pleasant than this negative part of this. Uh, first, I'm going to read in the in the comments because I see or I can see them today, and it's very good. Uh, good morning, good morning, bless you all. Yeah, thank you. And it was somebody read a lot. Belinda Metz, thank you. Alignment comes from the heart, from love, from the depth of compassion, and that is how anything will expand and shift forward in a new timeline. Thank you, Belinda, because that's what this talk is about aligning with our hearts. And this is what most of my talks have been about lately. And this is what my mission is right now, is to bring people back to their heart and to trust what their heart is saying over what their brain is saying. We are going through, the world isn't flipping. It's our brain is flipping because our brain tells us what the world is. So the fear that we've had about what's happening outside of us is happening within us right now. And this is what's causing all of this distress, all of these things that are awakening us in a very not pleasant way. My red bumper stickers are warnings. The first one was, pay attention, suffering is optional. Think about that. Pay attention, put your mind, suffering is optional. If you listen to your heart rather than your brain, you will have less suffering. The other red warning was question tyranny not authority. I was stopped at a red light one time and a guy in a postal vehicle started to argue with me about the word tyranny. That made him angry. I'm sure he was a veteran and I'm sure he had been in battle and and seen tyranny firsthand and probably lost a lot of friends' lives that he knew because of tyranny. 
So he had a reason to be raging, if you will, and angry. But in that moment, I didn't argue with him. I looked at him and I just smiled and my light just went out, but that's okay. And I realized that he's entitled to what he feels. But we need to question the tyranny that comes as a result of being in authority. Not the authority itself. And when we look at this country today, it's the authority that we're raging against. You have authority over me. Well, that's not the problem. The problem is the tyranny that the brains of these people who are in authority positions are cramming down our throats and forcing our future generations to suffer through. I'm going to stop preaching and I'm going to read what I wrote yesterday. The title is on the title of our talk at Global Heart Team was Honesty in Our Personal Heart. Honesty in our personal heart. I didn't say honesty in our brain. I didn't say honesty in our bumper stickers. I didn't say honesty uh, of our leaders. I said honesty in our personal heart. Here within our powerful heart, let me move this over so I can read it more effectively. We'll try to move it anyway. <laughs> Here within our powerful heart, true honesty dwells silently, flowing gently throughout our bodies. It's the brain that creates distortion. Based on the energetic messages it receives from the neural network of our physicality. The heart is gentle and kind in all expressions, reminding us to ask it more questions, offering us the truth without words of confusion. Let us allow our hearts to guide us more as the human logic becomes more unstable and the storytelling confirms a lack of honesty. As we embrace our future self in loving kindness, seeking to share it with others around the world, our heart's honesty will speak louder than our voices. And I'm going to put that in the uh, post that here as I think I'm listed as humanity healing, but it's it's there and I'm going to post it. There you go. Into, and I want you to take that with you when you leave today. Copy it. Put it somewhere where you might read it again. Because what's happening now is we are coming home to our heart. Coming home to where the rage is now damaging our hearts. When we carry rage and fear in our body, we create fields of energy within our fields of energy that is destructive. And the first person who gets attacked is us. And we become not only the victim, but the perpetrator. And we can run around pointing the finger at everybody else out there in the world. 
But if we don't address what's here in our hearts, we become dumb. And I believe that every one of you understand what I'm saying. Because you're sitting here listening to humanity healing. And that's what this is all about, is humanity healing. Not just a couple of words that mean something, but the actual physical and emotional process of humanity healing. And we can't heal until we learn that something is wrong. So like my sleep apnea, I thought I'd sleep fine. I mean, I toss and I turn, I have crazy nightmare dreams that are bizarre. I, but when you read the chart, it says 39 minutes out of an hour, my body is looking for oxygen because it's only at about 80% oxygen receiving had no clue. But when they attach you to all those tapes when you, you go for the sleep test, it's like, uh, I told the doctor, I says, that was one of the best nights I ever slept. <laughs> and she says, and that's the numbers from it. So imagine what your levels are when you're at home. So the key for all of us right now is what we don't know Let us look inside of ourselves. Let's search inside of our hearts as to how should we, I don't like the word should, but how do we learn to react with love rather than rage? And we're all susceptible to this dis-ease, if you will. The next two bumper stickers, let me see, yeah, there's two. The next two bumper stickers are the flow of life. So this is 1996. These were messages given to me to put on a bumper sticker. And those, these two sold the most out of all of them. Life is shifting. Living is knowing how. Isn't that what we're doing now, shifting? We were doing it then, but we were unaware and unawake and unaware. But we know now life is shifting. And therefore, living is knowing how. And we can't ask our brains anymore how. We have to ask, have to ask our hearts. Our hearts know how. But if we're not listening to them, if we're listening to the Wi-Fi of the world, what are we going to get? Distortion, lies, agitation. Come back into your heart. Listen to your heart more deeply. The second green bumper sticker was Practice unlimitedness. What does unlimitedness mean for you? For me, it was to let go of all of the things of structure that society, that school, that teachers, parents, relatives, laws, rules and regulations had put in my mind. It didn't mean that I was going to break them but I was going to look at them again in a different way. And I was going to look at that and say, in that structure, I am an unlimited being. And knowing that we are here in this moment as a collective, as well as a united self 
we need to spread that unlimited idea to others. Firstly, by un taking the limits off of ourselves. The fact that I can talk to guides to, to do what I do, it's not, it's not a miracle. It's, I mean, we can look at it as a miracle. We can look at it as the power of God. We can, but that happens every day in every one of your lives. You just have forgotten how to see it. Or you've not trusted it. Come home to your heart. This is where trust lives, not here. The brain doesn't trust anybody. No matter how much you try to program it. And the reason it doesn't trust anybody is because when we were very children, very small children, and didn't understand any of this, we were violated in many different ways. And we learned as children in our subconscious not to trust. And now as adults, as we see this country and the world doing, we have, it's brought up all that lack of trust and it's put us right here, right in the front of your face. You can't avoid it. So the trust, the trust is in knowing that you are an unlimited being. You have the power of creation within you. You have the power to create other humans within you. Whether you're a male with your sperm or you're a female who is the bearer of the child. This brings me to the abortion business. How do we say to, and I'm going to look at this from a male perspective, to a woman who is liable for I, my being here? I know today they can probably create humans in, in Petri dishes. But are they really humans is the question that I have right now. Or will they be created and programmed by electronics to be something else? We are living beings that come from a living woman's body. And the women's, the women have the right to govern their body. And when there's something going in their body, they have the right, the God-given right, to make that choice. God didn't make us idiots. That which we call God is sovereign. It's the sovereignty within us. So we come to the place of trust. We can only trust what our heart says. Is our heart telling us to go out on the street in rage? Is our heart telling us that we need to create fear in others? Is our heart telling us to belittle and to harm others? I don't believe it does. Here's where it comes from. Let's realign ourselves between love and fear. Let's follow the road of love. Let's send love, massive amounts of love to each other. And in return, the reciprocity of that will come back to us. What we give, we receive. If you give fear, if you give pain, if you give rage, Who's doing that? 
we look at the world, oh, it's creating it in me. But if you're giving it to somebody, you're creating it. We are creator beings. Create love. Which brings me to the last three. Which are blue. Which is our highest self. Blue like the sky. The first one I told you was, I am, therefore I think. I still have that on one of my cars. I still... People shake their head and they, who is that? What is it? What are they talking about? It catches their attention. I've had people who have argued with me about the wisdom of Descartes and blah, 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 blah. I said, yeah, well, I am. If I am not, there's, there's no brain to think with. When I died, my brain wasn't working. My heart wasn't working. Or if it was, it was on such a very low count that it created the near-death experience. And I was taken out of my body to realign with who I truly was beyond human logic. And each one of you live beyond that human logic as well. Whether you believe it or not. The second was, I'm not sure which one was next. I, I, I'm going to say I'm going to do it in the order it was because whenever I created this thing I probably knew more than I do right now <laughs> and and so the, the next bumper sticker says to thine divine self hyphen be truth to thine divine self be truth so who is that divine self what is that divine self ponder that think about who am I as a divine self? If I'm a divine self, if I am an I am being, what does that mean? To me, this self, this human self. And the next bumper sticker is, in the light we are one. In the light we are one. And that was the second stage of my journey in my near-death experience. The first was peace. There was no body. There was no me. I experienced peace. The next experience was light. Light beyond anything we can humanly recognize or even call light. There was no physical body. There was no me. There was no brain. There was nothing. It was just, I was that light. I became that light. And from that light, it turned into love. That light became the energy of love. And so today, we have this talk. And this is what we really need to come back to, is to understand that in the process of everything we do that we have an opportunity far greater to change the world than we ever imagined and if we can't imagine that then we're going to always be at a loss a loss that it's going to devastate all of us. So, in closing today, I'm going to try to, I, <laughs> I'm going to, try to keep it <laughs> less time, but Charlie, Chatty Charlie Riverman <laughs> is in the house. I love you all.
bless you for tolerating and listening. But I want to, you know, also remind you that we are here together to implore upon each other uh, wisdom, um, offer each other help. So in closing, I have this beautiful book that somebody gifted to me, Prayers to the Seven Sacred Flames, and it's done by Ariella Louise Jones from Mount Shasta. And um, it's called Prayer for Healing. No, that's not the other one. It's this one. For an auric, a fee, for an auric field of violet flame healing. And I want to read this to each of you as well as myself so that we may invoke the violet flame within ourselves and deepen our relationships to each other and to the rest of the world and to come out of the state of rage and back into the state of love and know that without love, living has no worth. And it's titled, For an Auric Field of Violet Flame Healing. In the name of the great I am, I call to beloved Saint Germain to saturate the world with waves upon waves of violet fire, to infuse every particle of life, every man, woman, child, on this planet, in an auric field, of violet flame, to protect and to awaken them. I ask that this action be sustained until perfection is restored. In the name of the I am that I am, from the Lord God of my being, I ask now that every cell, every atom, and every electron of my four body system, all my subtle bodies, every particle of life of who I am in all dimensions and states of consciousness, the violet flame of freedom's love. I now ask to be filled again and again 24 hours a day, each day of my life. And so be it, beloved I am. Take a deep breath, breathe that in, allow it to flow through your lungs, through your arteries, fill every neurological center in your body and trust that you are, I am, and live accordingly to what I am speaks to you through your heart. I love you all. I thank you all. I am you. You are me. We are unity. One heart, one love. May you be blessed. Not today, not just today, every day. May you see the blessings in yourself. May you come to realize the true strength and wisdom that each one of you hold within the molecular structure of your body. that you are precious gold in a world that is spinning out of control. Be that golden light. Be that purple heart. Violet heart. I love you. I thank you. I respect you. We'll see you next um, Friday. And remember, 
loved is the answer. Bless you all. I'll see you somewhere out there in the, the world of whatever. Just remember, 